Hello there, welcome to Sightline. Today we have Mr. Nate Leslie. He is uh, president in uh, Leslie Global Sports in Vancouver, Canada. And also he is working here in Mongolia to develop hockey sport. Great to see you here in Mongolia. Thank and you. can you describe for us when did you come here in Mongolia and why you come here in Mongolia? The first time I came in 2015 after building a relationship over the internet with a local hockey coach, Puji Chochiljav, in the eastern side of UB. Mm -hmm. And at that time, we brought uh, a small amount of hockey equipment, and my brother and I, Bo, uh, our, our coaching expertise, and we wanted to travel the country coaching children, giving them the equipment that we brought, and filming it so that we could create a documentary to share it with, with the world. And that was a successful project. And then last year, the Trade Commissioner, uh, Steve Bassadur, here from the Embassy, uh, with the support of um, Ambassador Sproul, uh, contacted me asking if we can do it again, but on a larger scale. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I graciously accepted, but I said we would need some help. And so this time, back in October, uh, in Vancouver, through my hockey community there, we filled a shipping container a, tw a seven meter shipping container of hockey equipment, the equivalent of about 600 sets of equipment, mm -hmm. uh, and shipped that. It arrived here in December with the help of the embassy and, and Mergen Arslan from the Mongolian Hockey Federation. We arrived a week ago mm -hmm. and did a similar trip, but with much greater support from the local community and from Canadian companies working here and from Mongolian companies and the embassy and we visited rinks in Ulaanbaatar and then in Bugant and Erdenet this mm -hmm. time, uh, working with the children, working with the local volunteer coaches and distributing the equipment that we brought. And uh, we're very proud to say that we think in 2015 when we arrived, there was about 600, 700 children playing. Mm -hmm. uh, when we arrived a week ago, there was about 1,000, so oh, it's wow. growing, yeah. but we've been able to add 600 more kids playing with the equipment that we brought and of mm -hmm. course the goal is to do that every year. Yes, of course. And it's really interesting that why you choose the only Mongolia, why you selected Mongolia to work here. I never imagined I would in my whole life. <laughs> and I, building my hockey coaching business in Canada, I wanted it uh, to make sure that I had an online presence so that I could help coaches all over the world, but I never thought Mongolia. Mm -hmm. And one day I woke up in 2014 with an email from Coach Puji mm -hmm. uh, and his Mongolian uh, email address. And I thought, wow, this is, this is bigger than I ever imagined, mm -hmm. right? And so uh, we very quickly fell in love with the idea of coming to somewhere so far away, but that has so much uh, in, in common with where I grew up in the mm -hmm. prairies of Canada with the flat uh, land and the cold weather and the oh, outdoor rinks and uh, hockey has really been a gift to me in my life as a professional player and now as a professional coach that it has taken me all over the world and now I can add Mongolia to that list but we've really fallen in love with uh, the hockey community here and the hospitality and it's really uh, a dream come true that I had never actually imagined mm -hmm. uh, to be able to make this you know my one real passion project to be able to continue to help make a difference at a grassroots level in your country. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much for sharing your experience and choosing Mongolia to develop the hockey because I think that there's a lot of teenagers, also the adults don't know also about the hockey and yeah. it's the really good job to, to spread the hockey uh, understanding through the Mongolian generation. Yeah. yeah, and also I would like to ask that also now we have the equipment and what yeah. is the next step to develop the hockey? What is necessarily need for us? Yeah, great question and I think it's whatever sport, whatever activity, art, music, sport, if children in a community can fall in love with something and they wake up in the morning excited to do it, uh, it's good for everyone. It's good for the child, it's good for the family, for the community, and for your whole country. So all of the different projects that are happening that people are supporting here are equally important um, because as, as we know, we need to look after the kids so that one day they can look, look after us when we're old and gray, right? <laughs> right. And um, so what's next? We need to continue to get equipment here because it, it, it's really hard for kids to get equipment here. It's, we've heard it's a 12-hour train ride away in Russia and new equipment is very expensive. Mm -hmm. So we can provide used but very good condition equipment. Um, 
things like this, your show, and uh, all of the media attention that we've received does so much for the country because someone is watching it right now saying, I didn't even know there was hockey here, mm -hmm. or, oh, finally someone is caring, caring about sport in my community. That's and fine. so it's all positive. Uh, we need to continue to have the support to financially be able to get the equipment. We can get it for you, and the, the sponsors that we've had and the support of the embassy have helped us get it into the country without limitations or problems at the border, which has been wonderful. It's all used equipment that families in Canada want to give. Um, the ice rinks in the communities that we have seen, it mm -hmm. has been very touching to see uh, many of them improved since the last time. In 15 District, uh, in Bugant, last time we were here, the rinks were falling apart. Mm -hmm. And now people with, with uh, interest in the community have fixed them up and are operating them. Um, your local mining company, Blast, mm -hmm. here is keeping this rink up and running so that the children can play for free. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've never seen that anywhere mm -hmm. in the world, that a company will sponsor it so the children can play for free. So you're leading the world in that department, <laughs> um, continuing to have those rinks. And really, uh, the cost of building an outdoor rink like you have is not so much. So mm -hmm. right now, if there's 10 or 12 or 14 rinks, with your climate in the winter, if there was 30 or 40 rinks, it mm -hmm. would be, you know, we can just keep, keep growing the game. Mm -hmm. And with that growth comes the energy and the support. And it, it's, like a, it's like a train. You can't stop it anymore once mm -hmm. it gets going big enough. Mm -hmm. But when it's small and no one really knows about it, it can kind of fall away from people's attention. And then everyone's just sort of, you know, climbing to keep up. So mm -hmm. um, media, equipment, ice rinks, support from those in your country and mine who can financially afford mm -hmm. to help a little bit makes all the difference and we're seeing that here. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Then the younger generation, how they feel about the hockey? Just look on their faces. You know, you've done some stories and taken some pictures already, which we really appreciate. And, you know, as an example, we, we've arrived in some communities uh, and kids have been waiting for hours because it's taken us a long time to travel from Bugant to Erdenet. And we get there and they're waiting for us and they're, they're thirsty and hungry for uh, the experience and a little bit of structure, you know, and uh, having adults um, demonstrate that we care about them, right? Mm -hmm. I've never met them before, but that doesn't matter because I want to help and they can, they can see that. And, and um, so that's really important, you know, whether you're a child in Mongolia or Canada or China or, or Germany, it doesn't matter. You need something to be excited about mm -hmm. in the morning mm -hmm. and something that you're willing to make good decisions in your life, whether it's uh, drugs or alcohol or too many video games or whatever it is, yes, it is. sport, art, music, all these things can help keep the focus of the children and make them uh, healthy physically mm -hmm. and healthy mentally. And in the meantime, if we grow some great athletes and they go on to uh, represent Mongolia, great. But the most important thing is the community and the health. And I think that there are viewers, our younger generation viewers, who are really interested in hockey, watching our interview, how they can contact for, to uh, join the hockey. Uh, the hockey. It's amazing. Every community, it seems like one phone call or text message and everyone from every kid in town is there <laughs> very quickly, right? But you do have a uh, Mongolian Hockey Federation. Okay. Um, I won't give out Mergen's cell phone number because I think it runs enough, or mm -hmm. it, it, it rings enough already. But, it is but uh, open yeah, for everyone. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We want kids playing. And so um, mostly kids, in if there's an ice rink in their community, they probably know it's there. Mm -hmm. Go down, get on the ice, ask questions, ask who they can speak to about getting involved. And from what I've seen in Mongolia, the kids don't have a problem doing that. They're very <laughs> keen to, to get uh -huh. out there and say, hey, I want to play. Can mm -hmm. I play? Can I play? And that's the attitude they need. So um, there are rinks in, I, I will be wrong here, but 10 or 12 communities. So you're um, in Ulaanbaatar? Ulaanbaatar, uh, Darkhan, Erdenet, Zunhara, Barunhara, Bugant. Mm -hmm. um, and a number, a few others that I think I'm missing, but uh, those are a good place to start. Mm -hmm. In the school in Bugant, they just have to look out the window of the school mm -hmm. and the rink is right there. It's oh, beautiful. Okay. Yeah, it's yeah. great. And, uh, and there's another one here uh, near a Russian school, just 10 minutes from here, mm -hmm. from where we are at the embassy here. So yeah, it's around. Just get out, get off your couch, mm -hmm. get out of your house and go play.
Okay, great. Yeah. Then the uh, kids have the opportunity. What about the adults? They have the opportunity to play the hockey, or it, I think there are a lot of adults who are really interested in playing hockey, but there is no place or equipment, and but they understanding how to. Yeah, yeah. From what we understand, hockey was brought to your country by Russian workers in the 70s, and so uh, there's also there's still in some places a strong Russian community that is kind of leading the hockey for the adults. Oh. We had a great experience in Erdenet this year. Uh, we were. Uh, arriving late at night and a group of adults were waiting for two hours waiting for the Canadian guys to show up to play a game. Mm -hmm. I was sleeping in the car and they woke me up and said get on the ice. Mm -hmm. So we played until I think 11 o'clock at night. Mm -hmm. um, you know our focus is on the kids um, because that's, uh, that's where it is in our heart but the more adults interested in hockey is good for the children and good for the adults too. We mm -hmm. all need something to be passionate about besides work, right? We all need a hobby. When you came here first in Mongolia, there were only a few kids playing, interested in hockey, and now there are thousands. And how many of them the girls, and how many of them the boys? Well, from what we learned last time, we think there was somewhere between 500 and 700 kids playing, kind of organized hockey before. Uh, one or two or three girls up in Bugant, the, the daughter and her friends of one of the coaches, this time with now with all of our equipment and all the help in the last few years we think there could be as many as 1600 so that's maybe like triple mm -hmm. somewhere between a thousand and 1600 it's a little bit hard to track because mm -hmm. it's not completely organized um, we believe there are now at least 30 girls playing organized hockey so mm -hmm. it's uh, many times more and uh, now you have uh, a women's national team mm -hmm. which is very exciting yes yeah uh -huh. And would you like to mention that they bought the letter? Yeah, so um, for many years I coached a, a, a great young woman named Davida in Vancouver and she was a goalie and she's graduated school now and she heard about our project and uh, she gave us all of her goalie equipment and she wrote a beautiful letter with a picture of her playing and inside it it said, whoever opens this bag, could you please give this to a female hockey player, a female goalie? And so we hoped that that would happen, mm -hmm. but you don't know, right? Yeah. And so we arrived, and on the way from the airport, I asked, did anyone get that bag of goalie equipment from my friend Davida? And sure enough, it had. Mm -hmm. And it went to the, a girl who is now the goalie of your national team. Mm -hmm. and, and we coach Ben Mackay that has come with us on this trip. He's not with us here today, but he was able to connect and meet that girl. And so he is now connecting Davida and your goalie, mm -hmm. and it's a really special story for all of us. Thank you very much for Davida helping out and supporting hockey here in Mongolia. I'll, ma I'll make sure she knows. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, as you mentioned, you have uh, came here in Mongolia first in 2015, and how does it feel when uh, four years later, when the embassy requested to join the program or the project? Uh, you know, it's, uh, I just pinch myself all the time. <laughs> you know, my first meeting in 2015 was here with the former ambassador. Ambassador Jagger, and um, but this time to have them really uh, spearheading, we say, like organizing the whole mm -hmm. project. I mean, I, I kept telling my wife Tara, like, can you believe it? Can you believe <laughs> the Canadian Embassy is organizing this and getting behind it? And um, they can just do so much with one phone call, right? Mm -hmm. And 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 uh, whether it's through local politicians, I mean, that to me is what is going to make this sustainable. Mm -hmm because you know they invite uh, you here and here we are talking about it on national television I mean I couldn't do that by myself so um, I'm, I'm a proud Canadian mm -hmm. but I, I love bringing the game around the world so to have the support of the embassy here I, I really yeah I pinch myself thinking <laughs> is, is this really happening mm -hmm. you know so it's uh, it's been really uh, gratifying experience Mm -hmm. uh, if there are any companies or someone who wanted to uh, develop this project, who wanted to help for this project, how they can help for us? You know, the same way that Trade Commissioner Steve Bassadour found it. He was looking for hockey to play in Mongolia and he typed in Hockey Mongolia Ulaanbaatar and he found my website in Canada uh -huh. and that started the communication. <laughs> yeah. So I guess you just go into uh, your, your internet and search for hockey in Mongolia and you'll either find me or, or the, the Federation. Um, the ways that they have supported this year, there are 
uh, local companies, for example, Blast, that is, that is funding the, um, the rink maintenance at a rink in the eastern part of the city. There are three Canadian companies, uh, Major Drilling and Red Path and Erdine, Erdine Resources, who paid for the shipment of the equipment. Oh. Of course, we can always use mm -hmm. more help there, spreading the cost. Mm -hmm. yeah. Great, and you are doing here, and you are living in Mongolia. And how do we do? We have some coaches here in Mongolia, located coaches, or Mongolians, or international. Yeah, so I'm living in Vancouver, Canada, and I'm here for a week. And each time, each community, we have met the one or two people that are really part, center part of the, the hockey community. And so, uh, sometimes they're teachers, sometimes they're local people in the community that want to see good things for their children in their community. And um, last time we were here, we met some Canadians, Ryan Van Geest and others that were Canadians living in Mongolia that we found out they were donating their time as well. Uh, so this is an English interview. If there's, uh, you know, Canadian or American or anybody with ho Russian, Swedish, any international people here, trust me, you're welcome to come and help the game. The children want you out there. The locals want, the, want you out there. Please don't feel like you're on the outside. Uh, just come and put up your hand and say, mm -hmm. I can help, and I know that people will let you help. Mm -hmm. yeah. You said that not only here in Northampton and also in rural areas, you have the ice hockey rinks. And are there differences between the children from the capital city and the rural areas? You know, I've only been here for a few days each trip, and so I can't say how different their lives probably are, but I've seen driving around that Growing up in the rural areas is growing up uh, is different than growing up in the capital city. But one thing that they have in common is the love of the game mm -hmm. and the passion to play and the commitment to play, whether it's cold, warm, windy, snowing, whatever, they're ready. And so I think it's quite possible that the kids in the rural areas and the city have more in common maybe than they might think. Mm -hmm. And that's the great thing about sport is it can bring people from yes. different cultures, whether it's in your own country or internationally together and you find out, hey, we're all kind of the same here. And so sport is great for peace in the world. Um, and, and hopefully the kids can see that they have that connection with each other. Mm -hmm. Within the framework of the project, would you like to do something in the future to collaborate uh, Canadian uh, teams with the Mongolian teams? I think we need to, don't we? Because we noticed when we were watching the kids tournament in Bugant, I looked out and said, wow, this is an amazing setting in this part of the world I never imagined I would go to. But the level of hockey that was being played on the ice, we have that level in Canada too. Mm -hmm. Of course we have higher levels. Yes, we have 500,000 kids playing. But we have a level of players who have just been playing a couple of years, very similar. And so uh, maybe that's down the road that maybe one day we show up with uh, a couple of boys and girls teams from Canada to play. Wouldn't that be a special event? Okay, thank you very much for coming Mongolia and sharing your experience and knowledge. And if you have something to mention or if you have something to add, and if you have something to tell our, for our Mongolian younger generation, it's your moment. Yeah, great, thank you. For me, this whole experience has been a great example of teamwork, mm -hmm. right? you doing your part here with this story, the other media outlets that have done their story, uh, the, the embassy, the sponsors, the locals in their communities, everyone does a little bit. Mm -hmm. I could never have dreamed of doing all of this on my own. When you have something to offer a group, every person does that and every person has something different to offer. You come together and it's amazing what you can accomplish. In one, in one trip, we doubled the number of kids playing your sport in the country. I mean. Mm -hmm. That's a unique, very rewarding experience, and it just took a little bit from everybody. So mm -hmm. that's my number one life lesson for my family, my children. My wife and I have talked about it a lot, is that, uh, and Coach Ben, who is here with me, is, uh, it, it's a great feeling to make positive change. Okay, thank you very much. I wish you all the best, and thank you very much for de developing hockey here in Mongolia. It's my pleasure. Bye. That's all for today. Thank you for staying with us. We hope you enjoyed our interview. See you next time. Bye-bye.